and we are back. It is InfoWars Nightly News. We're about to have a commercial free for the next 45 minutes or so interview with Pastor Lindsey Williams, author, researcher, and uh, sleuth who has some amazing inside sources on the New World Order and what they have planned for us. Then we're going to go to break, and I'm very excited. We're going to come back and bring you uh, Ron Paul, the film, Ron Paul, the movie, um, basically built around his farewell uh, speech in Congress three weeks ago. Very powerful, very excited about this. And then I want to add, when the show's over tonight, going out to PrisonPlanet.tv viewers, we're going to go live with this at the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Uh, we're putting it on the main channel. Uh, and uh, I want you to get it and have it go out to everybody you know. So that is uh, coming up as soon as the transmission is over tonight. Now, I wanted to get Pastor Williams on because you got hour-long show. You got 15 minutes of ads. With intros and outros, you probably got like 35 minutes to really get into 10 new big points that his insider gave him. One of the insiders died a few years ago when we're able to release his name, obviously, and he was um, one of, uh, head of operations at Atlantic Richfield, you know, a high-level position at the highest councils of the New World Order. Not at the highest level of the New World Order, but in and around those councils. The other guy's even bigger, a former CEO of a big three oil company. Pastor Williams, more than 30 years ago, just to reintroduce, most of you know this, was able to be around all these people for three years on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. They used him as kind of the liaison out to the different crews, a bunch of oil companies together. That's how they work, carving up different things, getting disputes settled, and they used him as kind of a liaison. That, that's actually pretty common to pick some upstanding pastor, preacher, local that everybody seems to like uh, to, uh, you know, to work with the oil companies. And he learned about how energy was controlled. Now, this is more and more admitted today, and a lot of what his Energy Non-Crisis book first broke in the early 80s has now been declassified and been admitted. And so much, he told us about the Arab Spring. He said there'll be uprisings in Bedlam a year and a half before it even started. That I give him. Uh, he said gas prices one year would go up to $150 a barrel. Everybody laughed at him. They were like 60. It happened. Then he said, "Well, get get ready. They're gonna go down to 40." It happened. Went down to 38. Uh, so almost everything his elite sources have told him has come true. You can say, "Well, this didn't exactly happen," but then Lindsay would say, "Well, that's how you interpret what they say." But even if you're talking to the highest level person in the Bilderberg Group. Everything they say they want to do, they're not God. They want to be. They think they are. They're not going to get it all done. Things change. Programs change. There's splits in the elite because they're getting down to the end game now where you got global government being set up. Mega banks and 1.5 quadrillion they're trying to get people to sign on to. The, in fact, we have this article uh, as we go to Lindsey Williams. Uh, the, the, the head of the Bank of England, one of the most powerful private central banks in the world, owns part of our Federal Reserve, said this is like a new world war. And basically there's no way to get out of the collapse. And now the Bank of England is being taken over by another globalist from Canada. And now that's back in the news today in the London Guardian saying a dictatorial power is being given to them. That's happening in Greece, Spain, um, they tried it in Iceland. They defeated it. The only place to do it. They've done it in third world countries everywhere. They've done it to Ireland. They've done it here. They brag. Banksters declare they've conquered America. But today, if you just type in to the search engine, I, I had it pulled up in there and on the screen. If you just type in uh, Bank of England head, the first article is the London Guardian with the outgoing head saying this is dictatorial. This is a takeover. There's also Infowars.com with our article where they all admit it. Bankers declare U.S. and Europe conquered. So that's how they get the power as they control the fiat made-up derivatives, just like Bernie Madoff. But instead of him being low-level 100 billion con artists, these are trillion con artists, so big, and everybody's invested in it that they can't be brought down or they'll bring us down. Well, they have to go down because they're bringing us down to consolidate control. Now, I'm not going to talk for the next 40 minutes. I'm going to turn to Lindsey Williams. I'm going to give him the floor. Uh, and about 20 minutes into it, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and tell you about a new film, new breakdown he's done of this. But he's going to have the floor right now. Pastor Lindsey Williams joining us via the telephone. Thank you for coming on InfoWars Nightly News. This is commercial free. You've got another interview coming up in about 50 minutes. So I'm going to give you the floor right now for most of that. Uh, Lindsey, break down the 10 points. Go for it all. And uh, thank you for joining us. After the election, I contacted my elite friend. I knew that he would know some things that I didn't know. People were bumfuzzled. They were flabbergasted. They didn't know what to do. They were in disarray. 
and I ask him the question, what can we expect in the next four years? The information he gave me was so startling that the only way I know to describe it is the most startling thing that anyone has heard since the founding of the United States of America. Yes, you heard me correctly. I know that's a big statement, but I was given 10 agendas that the American people will face over the next four years. I was so startled that I didn't do a radio show for nearly three weeks. And I finally said, okay, it's time to tell the American people the facts. And I'd like to give you those 10 agendas at this point. Some of them are encouraging. Some of them are startling. Here we go. I hope that you'll write them down. You'll watch them happen. First of all, I'd like to make a prediction based on what my elite friend told me that you will find very interesting. The elite are not ready for a financial collapse yet. I hope you caught that. I know nearly all the newsletters, nearly everyone out there in the financial field is saying, oh, there's going to be a collapse after fiscal cliffs, cliffs going to be a collapse. No. The elite do not want a financial collapse yet. Why not? There's a very definite reason why not, and that brings me to the, the second part of this agenda, and this word is very powerful. They want to force debt creation. I hope you caught the word forced. They want to force debt creation to the point that every nation in the world, every state in America, every city, every county, every individual homeowner and head of a household, they want them into such massive debt, and they intend to create it by certain methods, which I'll attempt to describe if I can. Now, many of you remember years ago, uh, 30, 40 years ago, the first credit card that was ever out there was American Express. And at the time, I was a pastor in Florida. It was back in the 60s, and I went and got one. Uh, MasterCard, Visa, none of these were around. Well, not too many months ago, you heard what happened. All the banks were, were bailed out, and they came around to American Express, and they said, well, you're too big to fail also. And they said, you've got to become a bank. You cannot be a credit card any longer. And they forced America. You, did you catch that word? They forced Bank of America, American Express, they forced them to become a bank. They did the same thing with the banks. You remember that it was QE1, and just prior to that, they had said the entire world is going to collapse. They threatened Congress and said there will be riots. Uh, there's going to be a collapse. Uh, you must pass this bill. And Congress passed it, and QE1 came into being, and they bailed out the banks that they wanted to succeed and left the others to fail. It was a forced debt creation. Now, they're doing the same thing with students, college students. Yes, they have convinced you that you no longer can go to college without a government loan. This is a part of the agenda, one of the agendas of the elite for the next four years is to get every single college student they can into so much debt that when they graduate from college and can't find a job doing anything but flipping burgers or working in some fast food restaurant or maybe working for Walmart or Target, you will be so in debt that you will gladly listen to them whenever they say, we have a new world order for you. We have a new currency for you. Just give up your constitution and everything will be fine. Do you understand why they don't want a collapse yet? Because they want to force such debt creation on everyone. Now, right now you're hearing physical cliff. Oh, my goodness, it's everywhere. This is a part of debt creation. Are you catching this? They are going to use the physical cliff in order to do certain things to the middle class. And that brings me to the third agenda that my elite friend informed me about. If you're a part of the middle class, what you're hearing, tax are rich, tax are rich. Listen, that is such a smoke screen, it's almost unbelievable. Never mind taxing the rich. The, the, the rich can protect their funds, whether it be in Liechtenstein or in the Caymans or someplace else. What are they going to do to the middle class of Americans who work nine to five, get a paycheck, and everything's turned in on them, and there's no way they can get around it, nothing they can do about it? I have a prediction for you. Based on what I have turned, told, been told from my elite friend, the middle 
class, and watch it, you'll see it happen, the middle class is going to be taxed into oblivion. No, I know you're not hearing anything about this. You're going to watch it happen. It'll happen now after this fiscal cliff, and then gradually over the next four years, you are going to see every type of tax imaginable. I'm going to mention a few that they very very easily could use. They could use a marginal, marginal, marginal minimum tax. They could use a national sales tax. Obama has already declared that Obamacare, Supreme Court said it, it's going to be a tax. There was no way that they could get you to pay a premium I hope you caught the word. Whenever you get a, an insurance policy, you pay a premium. Obamacare, they knew that you could, they couldn't get by with that premium idea. So the Supreme Court declared Obamacare a tax. Well, what happened? This set a chain reaction off that you saw it just a few days ago. Walmart, America's largest retail employer, Walmart said, okay, if that's the way you want it, Here's what we're going to do. This is a part of the forced debt creation that they're going to put you in. Walmart said, okay, anybody working 30 hours or more, we're going to have to pay for Obamacare. And they said, we can't afford that and, and still stack them high and sell them cheap at the same time. So as a result, they are saying no one except management personnel at Walmart from now on will work We'll work as many as 30 hours. There are going to be 29 hours and less. Now, your fast food restaurants are going to do the same thing. Mark my words, Target, and the rest of them will do the same thing. What are they doing? Can you, uh, can you run an apartment or pay for a house and still uh, operate an automobile at the same time on less than 30 hours per week? No, no way in the world you can do it. Well, what's it going to do? It is going to put you into a debt crunch that is going to be a part of the forced debt creation that the elite have already planned, as my elite friend told me, this is in the agenda. Now, please, those of you who have heard me on Alex Schoen's show and InfoWars over the years, you remember, I was on Alex Schoen's show. It's in the archives. In 2009, Mr. Fromm and I were on the phone together, and he said to me, now this was my 87-year-old elite friend who died about a year and a half ago, and he said to me one day on the phone, he said, Chaplain, within a few years, he said two years at the time, we're up about three years now, he said, you will be so broke you will not be able to do anything about it. And at the time he said that, in 2009, I could not understand what the man was talking about. I can readily see it today because when I was given these ten agendas, I realized that they are going to tax the middle class of America into oblivion. They're only using the ploy of tax or reach, and that's not it. I want to give you a formula. I was just given it the other day. You write this down, and... When you figure out this formula on your calculator, I want you to tell me how long your home can survive using this formula for the devaluation of the dollar month after month and the debt creation they plan to put you in. First of all, because of the $40 billion that the Federal Reserve is pulling out of thin air and buying mortgage-backed securities every month, with that 40%, comes an automatic devaluation of the American dollar by approximately 3%, between 3 and 4%. Now, add on top of that new taxes. Mark my words. You're going to see that. Add on that new taxes that are the forced debt creation that will come out of a result of this physical cliff then put on top of that the tax for Obamacare, which you're going to begin paying next year. Now, you notice this is a progressive thing over a period of this four years of administration. You're not going to have all this happen tomorrow morning. You've got the 3% right now. You have the taxes that you'll hear about in a few weeks as a result of the physical cliff, and it'll be desperate or we're all going to fall. Then you've got Obamacare that's going to kick in the 1st of uh, 2013. Then you've got food prices that are going to escalate on top of that, just like they've been doing for the past year. Then you've got a 30-hour work week instead of a 50-hour work week. Now, you calculate all of that out on your calculator, and you tell me how long it will be that you can put clothes on the back of the family 
food on the dinner table, gas in the gas tank, and still pay the mortgage payment. And when the children are crying and you can't buy enough food to put on the table and you have a choice between food on the table or paying the mortgage payment, what are you going to do? You're going to take care of the children. So what's going to happen to the mortgage payment? Exactly what the elite have planned already behind closed doors. It is calculated how long it will take before the majority of Americans can look, that, haven't looked, that already haven't lost their houses will lose their houses, and they want to own, through this new program of the Federal Reserve, which is part of the elite Federal Reserve and not a part of the federal government, and they are the new world order, and how long will it be before they will own every piece of mortgaged real estate in the United States of America? I hope you caught this. It's already planned. They have calculated this out. They gave it to me, and they know how long it's going to be before they'll be able to say, okay, uh, you, you can't make that payment, so what are you going to do? Well, I'll go to the next agenda of the elite. The debt limit will be suspended so that the United States of America, our government, can spend into oblivion. And it's going to happen. Mark my words. You'll see it as a result of this physical cliff thing. Next, the dollar is scheduled. Please, now, this is over a period of four years. The dollar is scheduled to be phased out. Let me give you an example. You heard it last week. It was on the news. You even had, heard it right there on Alex Jones' show. Our president went to Phnom Penh in Asia, and he was going over to a summit. There were 15 Asian nations comprising one half of the world's population, and they were forming a regional comprehensive economic partnership and our president wanted the United States of America to be included. He actually attended the summit, and they basically thumbed their nose at him and told him to go home. Now, I want you to listen to what happened at that summit. The Southeastern Asian uh, Association of Nations included China, India, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, 3 billion Asians and 15 Asian nations. This happened just last week, and they said we will no longer use the reserve currency of the world in sale and trade amongst one half of the people of the world. So the American dollar now is going to be floating around out there, unwanted, unused, I'm sure you knew what happened with the BRICS group, which was Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, on April the 5th of 2012, when they said 43% of the world's population, 18% of the world's GDP, and 53% of the world's global financial capital, and they said we're not going to use the American dollar any longer for sale and trade of products amongst ourselves. Folks, the dollar is dead. The dollar has already died in six to nine months to a year maximum. These unwanted, unusual dollars are coming home. The Italy, so I have been told by my elite friend, have already calculated how long it will be before the dollar will be phased out to the point that you will be living in a second-rate nation currency, and it is scheduled over this next four years. Now, let me give you three factors that you will never know about if you don't hear it right here on InfoWars today. I was told privately, and very, uh, I don't know how to say it. I was just told by my elite friend, he said, Chaplain, there are three factions out there now that, that you need to know about. He said, number one, I know what they are, the old-time elite. I lived with them for three years. He said, number two, we have a president now that's like a bull in a china shop. He said he is totally out of control. He double-crossed the elite. Please, you remember this. They crossed Canada Pipeline. They wanted it. He said no, turned thumbs down on it. That was the Dobbs-Frank bill. He passed it through. The elite didn't want it. Then thirdly, he double-crossed them because they had said, you've got to open up public lands for oil drilling. Because of the chaos in the Middle East, we need to produce from our own American oil fields. And Obama turned his thumbs down on it, flipped his nose at the elite, said, I'm going to do what my Muslim Brotherhood friends want me to do. He bowed before the king of Saudi Arabia when he went over there. And, you, and, and as a result today, you have three factions that are working against each other, and I'll show you what's going to happen. You've got the elite, the old-time elite. You've got an out-of-control president that even they are having trouble with, and I don't know what they might do with him, you have, and I'm not making any predictions either. Then you have a new segment 
please, you, you must see this. There is a, and this is what they're calling it. They're calling it, I heard the words. Uh, he, they, he said it right there over the phone to me. He said, Chaplain, we have a renegade elite that is rising up in the world, which they didn't expect. What is that? Like the Phnom Penh meeting of last week, like the BRICS group that met back in April. These nations are saying, we don't want to fool with you elite, the old-fashioned elite anymore. We're going to rise up and through China form our own allies. What's it going to happen? You remember the old Western movies years ago? There would be a saloon, and I had this whole room filled with people, and all of a sudden the fight would start because somebody didn't think the crap table was being handled correctly. And the whole saloon, before you knew it, was in mass chaos, and everybody was fighting. And if you happened to be sitting in the middle of that saloon when it happened, oh, my goodness, you had to fight your way out. There was no other way out. I'm warning you right now. You... The, the middle class of America, you are caught right now between an elite, an out-of-control president, a renegade elite that they're not quite sure what to do with, but they'll find a way, mark my words, and you as a middle class of America are caught right in the midst of a fist fight, and it is going to be horrifying what you are going to suffer because of what's happening right now amongst the elite out there fighting with these other groups Mark my words, you must have a mindset change. You must know what to do in light of these things that are taking place. Now, I want to give you the next agenda. Uh, right now, in the United States of America, 38% of every person in this country is receiving some sort of remuneration from some government, either federal or state. It may be Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. It may be uh, some other payment or whatever. Maybe you, maybe you work for the government or you got a pension from the government. Thirty-eight percent of all the people in America right now receive some sort of payment from the government. I want to give you the figure four years from now. They've already calculated. I mean, this is already figured into their agendas. Four years from now, the elite plan to have 70% of the people of the United States of America receiving some sort of remuneration from the government. I'm going to make a prediction based on what my elite friend just told me as he was giving me these things. There will never be another honest election in the United States of America. Now, I'm not saying that the past one was honest. But you'll never see one that even comes close to being honest from now on because the elite know that whoever writes that paycheck is also going to get the vote and from this point on, if they succeed, and by God's grace, they won't succeed. You and I must succeed. Alex Jones must succeed. InfoWars must. But if they succeed and have their way, we will never have another honest election in the United States of America. I want to give you the gold prices. That's right. They've even calculated this in. You say, you mean to tell me that they've calculated gold four years from now? Yeah, they calculated it four years ago. You ready? In 2008, you remember, this is history, this is not a prediction, in 2008, gold was $800 an ounce. Today, gold is $1,700 an ounce approximately this morning. And in 2016, would you like to know where it's going? They already have it figured. They must take it to $3,000 an ounce. Yes, that's right. I don't sell it, but Alice can tell you where to get it. They've got to take it to $3,000 an ounce, and silver must go up in order to be able to bring in the new world currency. And in order to do it, they are going to back it by gold and silver. Mark my words. Well, I have another one that I must cover. And, Alex, you were asking about this when I was on your show on yesterday. Many of you will remember that back in about 2007, 2008, I was on the phone with Mr. Fromm. Yeah, I, I have no problem mentioning it because we, we were talking together. And he mentioned a phrase that so startled me, having been a minister of the gospel for 57 years. He said, Chaplain, the devil's Messiah. I was fascinated. Uh, I wondered what in the world he was talking about. So I went back and I said, okay, Ken, uh, let's back up a little bit. I'd like to know what you're talking about. That was the time that he made the statement to me. He said, the new world order cannot be brought in until first we have taken the God that made America great out of the classroom, out of the courtroom, out of public offices, out of the government in Washington, 
And he went on to tell me, and I gave it back in a DVD series back in those days entitled The Elite Speak. I I gave you all the facets of what the devil's Messiah was going to be. They have a devil's Messiah agenda for the next four years. Pastors, if ever you listen to me, you've got to listen to me now. You heard me say a few moments ago that the the reason they don't want to collapse right now is because they want to force debt creation on everybody. This includes your church. Please, as the dollar devaluates, and I have given you the percentages that it will devaluate month after month, you figure it on your own calculator. How long will it be before the – here's the plan. How long will it be before the people in your congregation can no longer give as they're giving right now because the dollar – has devalued to the point that it will be over the next four years, and the plan of the elite is to confiscate your church so that they can tell you what to preach because they must do away with the God that made America great. And you few pastors that are still left out there, you're still a part of what this really is. You remember back in the days of Jerry Falwell? You remember the moral majority? I'm sorry to have to tell you, pastors, I've been a minister of the gospel all these years, and I have to be honest with you, you are an immoral minority today, and you are on the chopping block. And what you don't know is that they already have an agenda to take over your church, because when those people can't give and you can't make the church payment, they will come in and take your church just like they are going to take the private homes that the Federal Reserve now is borrowing, buying $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities every month, and the shopping center that can't make its payment, and the small business that has a small business loan based on a real estate as a collateral, they are going to take your church, and it is part of their agenda. You must, pastors, you must pay off the mortgage on that church, and you must pay it off immediately, or you're going to lose it. And they will dictate to your pastor what you ought to preach, because it will be a part of the New World Order. The other day I was speaking to a pastor along this line privately. I love him. I won't mention his name because I respect him so much. And the first thing he said, he said, well, chaplain, that means that the dollar at some point is going to be in trouble and have a collapse. I said, Pastor, you're exactly right. Uh, First thing he said to me, I couldn't believe it. He said, what about my pension? He said, am I going to lose it? I've got a prediction for you based on what my elite friend told me just a few days ago. Pastor? If you're 50 years of age and under, you don't have a pension. You'll never get it. With what's happening to the dollar, when the dollar fails, what's going to happen to the pension plans? What's going to happen to the life insurance companies? I'll let you decide it for yourselves. The Devil's Messiah program for the next four years, one of the agendas is to confiscate your church, be able to complete the progress of what they began years ago when they started this plan through the 401c3 organizational status and putting you into the condition that they want you in so that you think, you think that the Constitution of the United States of America says there is a separation of church and state. You'll never find that. Uh, That that phrase anywhere in the Constitution of the United States of America, they have made you believe it just like they've caused you to believe in the physical cliff, which likewise is a smokescreen and farce for the purpose of being able to bring on the forced debt creation that they want you on. Well, uh, I, I have to give you one or two more, and then I think I'll probably have covered these 10. Folks, you're going to see now mark it down. You'll see this happen over a four-year period, not tomorrow morning, but over a four-year period. You are going to see, and it's part of the agenda, to bring in millions of Muslims into the United States of America as citizens. And the wish of Mr. Obama, now this is not the wish of the elite. I've told you many times that the elite are not communist and they're not Muslim. They only use both of those, and when they get through with them, they'll throw them out in the bathwater. But I was told by my elite friend that one of the agendas of this out-of-control president, who they themselves are even concerned about, is to bring millions of Muslims into the United States of America and give them citizenship in the next four. Why do you think he's talking about the people to the south and from Mexico and the Hispanics? 
and those that came in illegally. That's not what the end of the agenda is all about. That, again, is a distraction from what he wants to do in bringing in millions of Muslims so that he can initiate Sharia law into America, which will nullify the Constitution of our country, and it is a part of an agenda over the next four years that you'll see gradually take place, and they'll do it so so slowly that it'll be like the frog boiling in the pot, and you won't even realize what is happening to you. You must the last agenda, you must become your own doctor. This, this Obamacare is the exact opposite of what you really think it's going to be. Any person that's my age, you even unwanted. You, they don't need you around, and you won't have a chance. You'll be waiting in the, uh, in the emergency room for 24 hours in order to get service. Mark my words, 40%, and I've made a survey, and I talked to David Jonda, a very prominent practicing physician today who has a nationwide radio show, and he said, Chaplain, 40% of the medical professionals in America are going to quit whenever Obamacare comes in. Can you imagine how long you'll be waiting in the room of the emergency room on any time that you want medical service? So, folks, you must have a mindset change. You positively must prepare for the inevitable. You can, and if you will begin now, you can prepare for what you're going to see happen in coming days, Alex. Okay, Lindsay, uh, we're about 20 minutes in right now. We've got about another 20 minutes left here. Uh, I want to talk about um, prophecyclub.com. People can go there and find all the different works you've done. You've put out just this week. Now, when you broke this with us yesterday, a group of DVDs breaking down the problems, but also a group of DVDs breaking down the solutions. And so I want to get into solutions, what the so-called uh, elites or alpha maggots are doing. Uh, but if folks go to prophecyclub.com, they can obviously find the new DVD sets. Uh, there's also a number, which I meant to have here in front of me, but I don't have. So, so to tell people about the two DVD sets and how they get them and the phone number, and then let's go into any other points on what they're planning and then some of the solutions for the uh, now 19 minutes we've got left. After I was given this information by my elite friend, I thought, what am I going to do? I began preparing. I said, I must record it first, otherwise people will say I never said it. So I produced a three-hour and 29-minute DVD series entitled the next four years, everything you can expect. When I got through with that, I, I was so appalled. Remember, I was a pastor for 12 years and a missionary for many years in Alaska. With a pastor's heart, I said, I can't leave people hanging there. We prepared a second DVD series entitled How to Survive the Next Four Years, and I gained, got two of the finest financial professionals of America together to help me. Please, I hope you'll take down our number, and then I won't say any more about it. Our toll-free number is one 888 Seven nine nine six one one one, or you can go on the web to prophecyclub.com, p r o p h e c y c l u b dot com, or toll free twenty four hours a day eight 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 seven nine nine six one one one. Now, I have never done anything like this before. We've never given solutions to this extent before. Uh, first of all, you must watch the derivative market. They told me that the uh, that the you can tell the, the sign that the average person can know when before the dollar is going to come to a collapse it will at some point the euro is going to collapse the american dollar will collapse at some point it's not going to take place i don't think from what my elite friends told me that it's going to take place within the next two maybe even three years but at some point down the line it is going to happen and they're going to use the derivative market as the method of collapsing all of the currencies of the world. Sure, they create. Days. Sure, they create the mega debt, the, the thousand plus trillion. They get their people into government. They sign them onto that. They tell us that that we owe all the tens of trillions when most of it is in our debt. That's how they've taken down third world countries. Now they've done it to Europe. Now they're doing it to us. It's about domestication. So it's not just about money. It's about power uh, and control. And and I understand that you're. I know who your source is. And I, and, and I believe that he believes what he's saying, and most of it has been happening uh, accurately. I can see a lot of it in the news as well and from my sources. 
But, I, I mean, you know, it was the dollar will be dead. Things are going to go to hell in a handbasket by the end of 2012. I mean, it was this big event. Now it's, well, it'll just collapse over the next three to four years. Are you saying there, uh, that, that, that just my interpretation of what he said was wrong? Or can you explain that to me? Well, he explained it to me. In fact, I oftentimes say to my elite friend, I say, wait a minute, you got me in trouble. You said certain things, and they're not happening exactly like you said it. And then sometimes he'll say to me, well, Chaplain, go get yourself out of a mess. We're doing the best we can. Other times he'll explain it. He explained this one, Alex. Let me try if I may. The dollar is already dead. It just hasn't come home to roost. What happened in Phnom Penh last week, the dollar, trillions of dollars are floating around out there now that haven't come home yet. What happened when the BRICS group met and formed their uh, meeting? Look to some others, if you will. You remember the largest uh, trade agreement that was ever signed in the history of the world was, sales, it was signed in February of 2012 when China and Japan said that they wouldn't use the American dollar in trade amongst themselves. Now, let me just list very quickly the nations that have already signed trade agreements, China and Russia. China and Brazil, China and Australia, China and Japan, India and Japan. And then there was the India and China, junk oil. Then there was Iran and Russia. Then there was China and Chile. Then there was China and the United Arab Emirates. Then there was China and Africa. And the African's biggest bank, uh, the a a Standard Bank in Africa, said, we'll handle any transaction that you want handled, not using American dollars, for any country in Africa. Then there was the BRICS agreement. Then there was the very latest one between China and Russia. Uh, and all of these trade agreements have basically nullified the American dollar. You say, well, I can still go sure, to the Sure, and I want to be clear. Uh, Lindsay, I've been saying the dollar's going to die. Most of my expert guests say that as well. I agree with your elitist source. I know who they are. I know they're at the highest circles. And I understand that a lot of the older elite, now that it's gotten to this point, don't like what's happening because they realize how destructive it is. But expanding on everything uh, here, I know Russia's corrupt. I know communist China's corrupt. I know that they made deals the Chinese did with the globalists in the 70s. So there's kind of a double crossing that goes on. Everybody, it's, it, it's, you know, it's cloak and dagger, a balancing program. But I've heard what Putin said. And I've heard what some of the Chinese top folks have said and what the BRICS are saying. And they say, your global derivatives are destroying us. You mega bankers have done this. We don't want your new world order. We want our new world order. So it's a bunch of globalists who will use whatever tool of control there is on their population. They're all bad. They're all wanting the latest piece of control because they're control freaks. That's why they're in power. It's like cancer. It wants to control the body even though it kills it. So, so, so we know where this is going. But, but what does it do to the Anglo-American, European, U.S., England new world order that that the new world order is so destructive that the other parts of the global system don't want to be second fiddle to it and don't want to go under Agenda 21. I mean, Putin's paying Russians to have kids. Putin's talking about poison in the, you know, in the vaccines. So I'm not saying Putin's a good guy either, but he is getting off the new world order reservation. Did your elitist friend say anything about that? Oh, positively. In fact, they realize they have a problem. And in the first portion of this, when I was talking about the three different factions that are going on out there right now, this renegade elite is what they're calling them. And that was the exact word he used to me. He called it a renegade elite. It is worrying them to death. The old-fashioned, the, the, the ones that are in their 70s and 80s now that still give me information, they are very concerned about this renegade elite that's out there that is not letting them do exactly what they want to do. But I go back to the dollar being dead. The dollar's already dead. It, it's like the dog limping home so he can die in the backyard. Uh, it, he hasn't gotten in the backyard yet. But people... Six months, nine months, a year from now, when these trillions of dollars return home that are not being used by these nations out here who have formed all of these agreements, they have already murdered the dollar. They have already shot it in the back. It is staggering into the backyard. Folks, you have the most glorious window of opportunity right now, while the dollar still has some purchasing power, to go out there and do everything that you're doing. Alex, we just bought a whole new camera system. I'm doing everything I can to spend everything I, I've got uh, to get into something tangible. And this brings us down to solutions. You must 
change your mindset and think in terms of the day that you won't have that dollar, that the derivative market has crashed. Now, the derivative market will bring every currency in the world down at the same time. I don't care whether it's the Russians or the Chinese or America. That market is a quadrillion, and it will bring all of them down. But in the meantime, you still have a dollar that has some value, and you can go out there and do something about it, but it's going to require a mindset change on the part of every person out there. Now, here's my suggestion. You need to so program your mind that you can be independent of every government agency, that's right. Now, you may be getting Social Security. Maybe you have food stamps and welfare, Medicare, Medicaid. That's right. Go ahead. You've got them. You paid for them. Enjoy them while you've got them. But you must have a mindset that is such that if that Social Security check didn't arrive after the physical cliff, that you could do without it. You, you must get a mindset change that if you had to go to the emergency room and wait for 24 hours in order to get service, you would know where some doctor is that you can go and pay him something under the table and, and, and get your help, or you're going to have to have that help at home in the medicine cabinet. And it, it, let me put it this way. If you were a farmer, what would you use as your own reserve currency? Now, please, understand, I'm, I'm way out here in the left field now. You cannot depend on the Federal Reserve. You cannot depend on the dollar any longer. If you were a farmer, what would you use as your reserve currency? No, no, not, not, not the Federal Reserve note, not the American dollar. It's gone. It's dead. It's out. It's shot. It's walking in the yard. If you were a farmer, you'd use food that you could raise on your farm, that you could sell and trade with somebody else. If you were a rancher, your alternative currency could be a cow. If you were a dairy man, your alternative could be milk. If you are a city dweller, which most of the people are in America, you had better have some gold and silver because it will pay your way through many, many adverse circumstances. In these next four years, you must have a mindset change and think in terms of the day that those food stamps may not be there, that Social Security may not be there. You will need those guns loaded, and you have an alternative currency that you can use to spare your house and keep food on the table of some kind. And, and, and just to interject here, you know, you notice the establishment media says we, none of us should ever own gold, even though it was 260 bucks and is now 1700 here in the last 12 years. But you look at governments, institutions, universities, uh, the Chinese, University of Texas, they're all buying gold like it's going out of, you know, I, I mean, they are just absolutely going crazy uh, out there getting into gold. George Soros is buying it while saying you shouldn't hold it. Uh, what do you think's going on there? Oh, they are buying it. They know what's happening. My elite friends are buying it. They're buying it by the, the tons. Listen, let me give you a definition of a rut. Now, all you patriots out there, I love you. I'm a part of you. Uh, you. You know what a rut is? A rut is a coffin with both ends knocked out. Somehow you're going to have to have a mindset change and get out of this rut, that, that this and that and the other, and start uh, start thinking of methods and ways that when all of this happens, you you need that gold and silver. You need to watch what the I watch what my lead friend does. And when I see him do something, I do something. You remember back about, oh, what, three years ago, Alex, I came on your show, and I said, I just made a survey of all my elite friends. I remember some of them's names, but I don't know where they are today. I only keep in touch with a handful of them. And I, I contacted them, and I said, where are all these other men? And I named them my name. I could not find a single elite that anywhere that is living in a city. Their primary re oh yes, they might have a penthouse there. They don't have a primary residence there. Their primary residence is out in the middle of nowhere. In fact, I was utterly amazed how many of my elite friends are living in the state of Alaska in the middle of nowhere. They, and when I see these people doing that, I do the same thing. I got out of the city. Uh, I bought gold. Or my elite friend told me that gold was the currency of the elite. You must get out of the rut that you've been in for these years of thinking you have to do these things in a certain way, and you're going to have to think of methods of an alternative currency, of an alternative lifestyle, and of another way to be able to survive. And oftentimes it's going to have to be on your own, Alex. Well, Lindsay, I'll tell you, you know, there's thousands of points that you know, uh, have, are, 
are big flashing red arrows pointing in the direction that you and your source are talking about, but the 1.6 billion bullets bought by Homeland Security in the last year, uh, since November of uh, 2011, uh, so a little more than a year, the, the buying thousands of armored giant black tanks, you know, wheeled tanks, the digging in, the hardening of structures, the giant military brigades domestically, the TSA on the streets, I mean, they are gearing up like America is going to totally collapse because they're engineering it. They brag about it. A lot of what you're talking about, they publicly brag about because they know the public is sucking their thumbs, watching television, you know, running around just giggling like lobotomized monkeys or something. What do you expect to happen to the general thumb-sucking public uh, as everything collapses, just begging on their bellies to the government? I mean, this is just yes. the state as God is what we're about to be taught. That's exactly what I expect the middle class to do. When your children start crying because they're hungry and you haven't listened to what my elite friends have told me personally to do and your children are crying, you are going to bow to the new world order. Uh, I wish I could say it otherwise, but I don't know how to put it. There's so many of you that won't have a mindset change. And if you listen to what these people are telling me, you can spare yourself great heartache. You don't have to stay awake at night. You don't have to look for black helicopters. Folks, please don't worry. You remember last year when I had 2012, the beginning of the end, and I said that one of the agendas of the elite, the elite was, uh, was stress and pressure. And I said that I contacted a uh, person in the medical field, and I said, what happens whenever major pressure is placed on the human brain or human being? And they said, Chaplain, worry, we'll, we'll shut the brain down. And I went back and I said, that's exactly why my lead friend told me that they are going to inject, oh, oh, you're going to have a terrorist attack next week. Oh, this is going to happen next week. That's going to happen. Oh, uh, uh, physical cliff. Do you realize that this is nothing in the world but a scare tactic to get you to shut your brain down so you can't think about the things that you really need to be doing over these next years, uh, a short period of time that you've got to get ready for the inevitable? Amazing. Uh, just incredible. Lindsay, I know you've got to go in about three or four minutes to do another interview, and I appreciate you giving us the exclusive on the radio yesterday and spending the last 50 minutes with us or so here today. In the three or four minutes you've got left, uh, give out the number one more time for uh, you know, what their plan is and then how to protect for it, the two, the two new DVDs. Toll free, 1-888-799-6100. ProphecyClub.com, or you can go, this is so amazing, a man in the United Kingdom set up a website for me because I was refused, told I couldn't have one. Go to LindsayWilliams.net, not .com, but .net if you wish. Now, please, we have put together two hours and 50 minutes of solutions, nothing but solutions, no hellfire and damnation, no uh, scare tactics, nothing but solutions. We've never done this before. You can spare yourself grave heartache. Alex, you can stay in business. I can stay in business. Remember, there was only about a 3% that bucked the king, and as a result, the American Revolution became what it is. We are going to win. But in the meantime, you've got to know what these elite are telling you. Why do the elite tell me these things? They tell me for the sake of me being able to protect myself because of the respect they had for me years ago. But, Alex, the elite are out there. You said it a moment ago. You put it so correctly. You said they're actually laughing at us. That's exactly what's happened. I'll tell you somebody that they're laughing at more than anybody. There have been so many Christian prophets over the past year or two that have given prophets in the name of the Lord that hasn't taken place. And I'm sorry to have to tell you this, pastors, but the elite are actually laughing at the churches of America today. I mean, literally giggling at you because your prophets have been wrong and you haven't raised up and done anything about it like moral majority did years ago. So, Alex, to the best that I can say is, please, 888-799-6111, prophecyclub.com. And, Alex, I consider it a privilege to be able to tell your audience what my elite have told me in order to spare themselves great heartache. You can. Well, uh, you know, un undoubtedly they're planning to implode things. They've done it all over the world. It's their formula. They brag about it. None of this is really even secret. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, your source puts it very well and kind of gives us exactly what they're thinking. So I I'm glad they're there. And, uh, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on with us. We'll talk to you again soon. Set that spiritual house in order first. Alex, thank you. Lord bless. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. All right, Lindsay, again, thank you so much for the time. Wow. Well, there goes uh, Lindsey Williams. Uh, unfortunately, 
I know who his source is, and I know that it is a high-level globalist, at least in the past, who has a lot of contacts. I um, personally have moved 20 miles outside Austin to the edge of the country. I have personally talked to billionaires, globalists, you name it, and they've all left the country or moved to rural redoubts. Uh, they say it won't be enough to be 20 miles outside the city with what they're planning. Uh, but they're getting the total collapse of society ready. They're trying to get their authoritarian system in place. The good news is we're fighting back at every level. And there are good people throughout private life, government life, everything. And people are pushing back against the takeover of the churches with the 501c3 and with the clergy response teams and the, quote, consultants that are in all the major denominations now saying if you want your money from the church hierarchy, whether it's Methodist, Baptist, uh, Mormon, uh, Catholic, I mean, governments are in there and, and they're giving them faith-based initiative money. And we have seen the Catholics come out and say, we're not going to pay for abortions. And Obama says, yes, you will. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's illegal. There is no jurisdiction. But going back to the World Council of Churches and then the National Council of Churches, who set up the UN, the Rockefellers, who set up the NAFTA and GATT, the Rockefellers, who just merged the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, uh, who uh, set up the World Council of Churches, the Ford Foundation, Rockefellers, they run it all. Uh, and it's incredible. I mean, they, they have steered the course of this nightmare system. And they set it up going back around 100 years ago, around 1910 or so, a little over 100 years. Wow, time's flying. And they came into the churches and they said uh, to these big denominations, we'll give you investments, we'll give you endowments, we'll donate billions of dollars to you every decade. And, th and that was billions back then. If you will change your your doctrine. And, and see, you couldn't just have state-run media overnight. It took time to take over the media. You couldn't just have globalist-run religion overnight, like the Soviet Union where they just take over and then, you know, they arrest all the Orthodox preachers and that's the end of it, and then have state-run churches. It took time, but now um, Methodist, uh, Episcopalian, you name it, because I have friends, I have family, you know, they all go to church. And part of my family's Methodist, the others are Baptist. And, and I talk to everybody. I mean, I've had friends bring me from big Baptist churches in Austin where they say, you're not going to criticize Obama and you're not going to talk about politics. Even at church dinners, they're telling members don't talk about politics because we're not allowed to talk about politics at church, claiming that that's separation of church and state. Separation of church and state means the state has no jurisdiction over religion, not the other way around. So they tricked them in the last 70 years or so to, to sign 501c3s, 501c4s, there's others, becoming charitable organizations that are government controlled. And they did it by buying off the leadership of the churches. And they are now pulling at Methodist churches the crosses out. They are now pulling them out of Episcopalian. They are now pulling them out of uh, some of the Catholic churches. They are, I mean, it's on. It's on. And they're saying, well, that might offend people. And we now, we don't worship Jesus. And whether you're a Christian or not, folks, even if you're an atheist out there, state-run religion, 501c3, uh, how many billions? I haven't checked. Type in, it was like 50 billion a few years ago uh, that Bush was giving out a year. Guys, search this real quick here before we go to Ron Paul. Um, Faith-based initiative yearly spending. It was $50 billion the year Bush left office. I want to know what it is now. Because last time I read, they were in, I mean, $50 billion going to your churches where they get the new vans, the new bus, they get the widescreen TVs, the pastor goes. Even at small churches, a lot of unpaid pastors are now getting fifty grand a year. They might have a flock of 30, 40 people that come, old ladies they visit. And they're, there it is. Obama stimulus pours millions into faith-based groups. That's political. That's a complete... That's a complete whitewash. Uh, that's 120,000 sent to local homes. So that's one town. 787 billion. That was the total of the Reinvestment Act. And then I guess parts of it, they just give you a small number there. We need the total number. Wikipedia will have it. I mean, I know it was 50 billion the year Bush left office. The point is, we, we can at least do this. Put up the, the text of the First Amendment. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, 140 million out of stimulus, and I'm sure that's a tiny bit. 
Guys, j just do this. Let's just put the First Amendment up for people. Let's just put the First Amendment up for people. The, the, the text of the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And then, or of the press, or of the people's right to peaceably assemble for a redress of grievances. And we'll put it up on screen so people can see the text of the First Amendment. There it is. I was going from memory. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Yeah, I forgot the freedom of speech part, but that's, I mean, look, look, Congress shall make no law. Let's put that back up there. And there's all the debates about it. It's 100% clear. Congress shall make no law. Let's say it again. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Folks, there's thousands of them. They go in and tell mainly conservative constitutional type churches, you will not talk about the Second Amendment. They tell the Bible study people, the deacons, that you will not talk about anything in America. Is that clear? You will accept everything. And, I mean, I've tried to go to probably 15 different churches in this town. And even if they're more patriotic, anti-New World Order, even to a certain extent, it's still, oh, the military's so great, and they mean wars and aggression are. See, so every, patriotism now is pro-war, pro-death, pro-lies. And, and, you know, some churches are like, maybe we shouldn't talk bad about abortion. You know, uh, that's political. And it's all a fraud. And, and you have the Indianapolis Baptist Temple. Pastor Dixon, I had on many times. That was a, one of the oldest churches in the, in the country, the biggest church in the country at one time. They said, we're not 501c3. They got out of it. They said, we're not going to sit here and, uh, and, and be tax collectors for the government. You collect that from our people that work here. That wasn't even the issue. They said, we're not going to be 501c3. They said, you cannot make a law respecting the establishment of religion. They said, we don't care if you're not 501c3. We're going to apply that to you for charities. And it's indentured servitude in this country. You waive your rights with an IRS thing. Uh, they, they, they grab your bank accounts without due process, and it all goes to the private Federal Reserve. Okay, I'm done. We're going to go to break and come back with Congress.